Hello. It's me. Welcome to Another Nightmare. Hey. I'm Danny. I'm Brian. This is the podcast where I tell my boyfriend creepy stories about haunted places or aliens or cryptids or whatever the fuck I feel like. Because we like creepy shit. Yeah. (laughs) What do we have in store today? So this week... We're going to talk about some creepy games. Ooh, what kind of games are we talking about here? Okay, well, these aren't like Ouija board. Like, Ouija board is going to have its own separate episode because there's so much to that history that includes like the Fox sisters and like... Hell yeah. That whole like spiritual awakening that everybody went through in like the late 1800s and all of that jazz. So we're just going to talk about some weird, creepy games that I found on the internet. Okay. So, I found a lot of these games from this website called theghostinmymachine.com. They did a whole, like, series of, like, the most dangerous games. Okay. And so, all these games that we're going to talk about were featured on that um, little thing. And I want to put a disclaimer up front. Don't play these games. Play the games. Don't do it. Do it. These are scary games. Fun games. Scary potential possession games. Definitely play these games. Don't do it. (laughs) You might D. (laughs) You're going D. But yeah, so um, I'm sure... People have heard of some of these games because, you know, a lot of other podcasts have covered these. And that's how I got introduced to these types of games is like, so it's like the elevator game, you know, Um, which we're not necessarily going to talk about in this episode. We might do another creepy games episode later on because there's so fucking many. Well, yeah, that they're, they're we, entertaining. Yeah, that we can cover them for days. But, you know, the elevator game is like possibly connected to the disappearance of Elisa Lamb and all that fun stuff. And that's like the most popular one, but there's other ones. And then um, there's also the, what was the other one that's super popular? I think it's like Charlie Charlie. Yeah, the one with the pencils. Yeah, but yeah. that's another like spirit Charlie, board. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie. But that's another one of those like spirit boards communing with the dead type of game. Yeah, it's just a like a really quickly made one too. Yeah, like, you just need a piece of paper and like pencils. two pencils. Yeah, yeah, and then you write yes, yes, you, no, you do some shit. Yeah. yeah. But we'll talk about those types of games in a different episode. Like this one is more um, in depth, creepy stuff. Okay. So right. we're gonna talk about the Three Kings ritual. Ooh. The Midnight Man. That one sounds great. The Corner Game. That I don't like that. <laughs> and One Man Hide and Seek. What the fuck? Yeah. So those are what we're going to discuss in this episode. So I just want to state again, I don't recommend that you play any of these games. They're super scary and have the potential to really fuck your shit up. I just want to say that I'm going to play every single one of these games. Not in my fucking house, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start with the Three Kings Ritual. Okay, I, I like the name, honestly. It's a good the name. Three Kings. It's a good name. You're not going to like this one. Well, shit. I don't like this one. Well, so. You don't know me. This game really came. In, I've been <laughs> with you for over a long time. There we go. <laughs> for over. Shit. For Years. <laughs> Anyways, this game came into the forefront of the internet when reddit user fable forge explained it in a post about eight years ago in the no sleep forum this has led ha, this has since led to many people coming forward with their experiences with the game so to start you will have to have a willing partner i'm willing this needs to be someone you are close to and cares about you oh hey <laughs> I don't want to play this. But we're already playing it, technically. No, we're not. We're just talking about it. Okay. So it can be a friend or a family member. 
And an important note here is to be sure both you and your partner are both mentally, emotionally, and spiritually stable. Okay, well. So that takes me out of the equation. <laughs> I was going to be like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm but not mentally not. stable enough. <laughs> um, do not attempt this game if either of you are having serious issues in your life. Also, do not attempt if either of you have consumed drugs or alcohol within the last three to five days. Jeez. So that removes you from the equation. Uh, d- marijuana isn't a drug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I may use it like a drug, but it's not a drug. <laughs> oh, man. So what you'll need for this game, you need one large quiet, empty room, preferably windowless. If it does have windows, be sure to cover them as completely as possible with curtains, sheets, or whatever the fuck you need to use. An ideal location would be in a basement if there's enough space. Hell yeah. You will also need one pack of candles. Um, It was not specified what types of candles, but I'd I'd vote for something a little bit more than a tea light. Since the candles will need to be lit for the entirety of the ritual. So get some pillars is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would vote for like a, like good size candles. Um, you'll also need a lighter. One bucket of water and one mug. One electric fan. Two large mirrors. Um, such as like dresser mirrors. Um These mirrors shouldn't be in danger of breaking, and honestly, if they do wind up breaking, you have vastly worse things to worry about. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You will also need three chairs, one alarm clock, one fully charged cell phone, and one small sentimental object, preferably something important to you from your childhood. I have nothing from my childhood. (laughs) Yeah, mine would be oh, like my uh, my my stuffy that I've had forever, Freddy. Dot dot. Sorry about that. She's upset. I don't know why. We're not paying attention to her. That's why. That's true. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna want to um, begin the setup for this game at 11 p.m. Do not begin if your partner is not present. Or has not been briefed on their duties. Your partner must remain in the house for the entire duration of the ritual. Interesting. So you're going to place one chair facing directly north in the center of your designated dark room. This is going (laughs) to be your throne. Oh, God. Place the other two chairs on either side of your your throne facing towards it at about an arm's length away from you. Gross. These are going to be your queen's chair and your fool's chair. Awesome. I'm sort of ready. (laughs) So then you're going to take your two large mirrors and place one on the queen's chair and one on the fool's chair to the left and right of you. Oh, God. Facing you. So you're putting mirrors facing each other. Yes. So you make a portal immediately. Yep. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. I'm ready. (laughs) So you're going to try your best to have them stand at a 90 degree angle or else you may get more or less than three kinks. So if you fuck up your angle, you might get more kinks present during your ritual than the recommended three. (laughs) So when you sit on your throne facing straight ahead... You should be able to perceive your own reflection in each of the two mirrors without actually having to turn your head. In the peripherals. Or your eyes. Yeah, so you're going to be using your peripherals a lot in this game. I'm good at that. So if you see your own reflection in the corner of your eye, just barely there, you've done it right. Okay. So you want to kind of see that fading glimpse of yourself without turning your head or your eyes. Fuck. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Then you're going to place the bucket of water and the mug directly in front of you, just out of your reach. Holy shit, okay. (laughs) Then you're going to put the fan behind your throne. You're going to set it on medium or low, not high. 
You <sighs> don't want it to be put on high and you're going to turn it on. Be sure it's on a stationary setting and not oscillating and you're going to leave it on. Okay. This is your fail safe. What? Yeah. <laughs> what well, you got to have a fail safe? Yep. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then you're going to leave the room, but leave the door open when you leave the room. <sighs> okay. Go to your bedroom, set the candles, lighter, alarm clock, and cell phone next to your bed. Make sure your phone is charging. You will need it to be fully charged when the ritual begins. And set the alarm clock for 3.30 a.m. This is a th- fucking three and a half hour long game? Four? Hope oh, I'm ready. No, no, you're going to go to sleep until 3.30 a.m. You're setting up at 11, a- at 11 p.m. And then you have to go to sleep? And then you're going to try to go to sleep. Until 3.30 a.m. You're going to turn off your lights and you're going to hold your sentimental object while you try to sleep. Okay. This is interesting. All right. So now we're getting into the actual ritual itself. So you're going to wake up at 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m. when your alarm goes off. Turn it off, but do not turn on the light. You're going to need to leave the light off. Keep a hold of your sentimental object. Don't let go of it. You're going to hold on to it for the entirety of your ritual. All right. Then you're going to grab your cell phone, light one of the candles, and return to the dark room. I just realized what my sentimental item would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got a baby blanket. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was, that's, I literally have had that. I in forgot my, that that in was my, still in the cedar chest. In my baby pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. So... All right, Ugh, so I'm then you're going to grab all of that stuff with your one lit candle. You must be seated in your throne by 3.33 a.m. Be sure to still have your sentimental object with you. So, you are not to proceed. Do not proceed if any of these things happen. Your cell phone didn't fully charge. Your alarm clock did not go off at precisely 3.30 a.m. You approach the dark room and find the door closed. Because remember, you left it open. Right. You approach the dark room and find the fan has been turned off because you left it on. Jeez. If you are not in your throne by 3.33 a.m., if any of these things happened, take your partner and all other occupants of the house, including pets, and leave the house. And do not. Come home until 6 a.m. What the fuck? I am so intrigued. <laughs> oh. It's not a super huge rush. Like, it's not like you get to the room and realize any of those things have gone awry. And then you, like, have two seconds to get out of your house. Like, you can, like, grab, make sure you grab everything that you need, but just get the fuck out of the house. If any of those things happened. Okay. If you do not encounter any of these red flags, you may proceed. It's a lot of red flags. Yes. Very interesting. So you take your throne, but do not look directly at either of the mirrors and do not let the candle go out. You're going to use your body to block the wind from the fan behind you to keep your candle lit. This is why the fan is your sail faith, your fail safe. Is because if your body gets moved at all, the fan will blow the candle out and end the ritual. Fucking A. (laughs) So you're going to keep your eyes focused on the darkness in front of you. Do not look at either of the mirrors and don't look at the candle. Should you have any questions, you may ask them now. You, You may or may not get a response to your questions if you do the response will come from the direction of one of the mirrors now keep in mind it will be your job to figure out which chair is for your queen and which one is for your fool because they are not designated at the start of the game you also want to keep in mind that from the point of view from your queen and your fool You are either their queen or their fool as well. Because all three of you are kings. Hence why it's called the Three Kings Ritual. Shit, okay. 
So you're going to want to make sure that you try to figure out which one is your queen and which one is your fool because the fool will lie to you. Whereas the queen will tell you more correct, more on the nose answers to your questions. Okay. All right. So <sighs> it's not going to be directly clear which is which. You're going to find out. Yes. <clears throat> So you're going to stay in your throne until 4.34 a.m. Just stay there and don't move. You can keep asking questions, but you are to be in your throne until 4.34 a.m. You got an hour, motherfucker. One hour and one minute. Again, do not look directly at the mirrors or the candle. Just straight ahead. Don't chicken out either. You need to wait until 4.34 by then, it's all over, and it's okay to tremble a little bit. Just don't move too much. What the fuck? <laughs> so you're not going to want to let your candle go out. Your body should be protecting the candle from the fan behind you. But if your body is to be moved suddenly, the fan is there to blow out the candle. So if you get jerked, if you get moved by something... The fan is there as your failsafe to blow out that candle and end the game. Creepy. I'm fucking, I'm like frozen <laughs> here. So at the end of the game, your partner at 4.34 a.m. should enter the room and call your name to end oh, the ritual. Oh, you're alone this, higher, this whole time? Yes. Fuck that. No, I'm good. So they're going to come into the room and call your name to end the ritual. They must not touch you. While they are in the room. I'm getting shivers. <laughs> if calling your name fails, then your partner should call your cell phone. How would calling your name fail? If calling your cell phone fails, your partner will go to the bucket of water and use the mug to splash water on you. They must refrain from touching you, though. What the fuck? If that fails, then it is your responsibility to use your sentimental object to help guide yourself back. What do you mean back? You're in, you're sitting in a chair. Oh my god. <laughs> you still want to play this game, Brian? No, I don't. If you do attempt this ritual, which again, I don't recommend, be sure you don't half-ass anything. First of all, too many fucking rules. You're summoning entities. You're opening a portal to the other side. I don't like that you set it up and then go to sleep for three hours. Well, you got to give it time to no, I know. bring the, them in. Yeah, you got to, oh, yeah, I'm just going to let a portal down in my basement. It's cool. It's all right. What if you don't do it in the basement and you do it in the room adjacent to your own bedroom? Same shit, different story. <laughs> I'm just... Picturing myself sitting in a dark fucking room with a candle in front of me, like, <laughs> I can't see shit. Yeah, you can't even look at the candle. You gotta stare straight yeah, you gotta into stare the darkness. St oh, fuck off. I'm. <laughs> and yeah, you will see things in the mirror. In oh, your peripheral yeah. Peripheral vision. You've got a flame in front of you that's mm -hmm. just fucking with your. Fu oh, man. It'd be all shadowy, it'd be all shitty. And there'd be a fan behind you. You'd probably be cold. <laughs> and you will hear things from the mirrors on either side of you, too. You know, you'll hear voices and noises and pops and all sorts of stuff from the mirrors. But you can't look at them. Creepy, creepy. I just feel like I'd start making fun of shit and it'd be bad. <laughs> You're like, Did that come from the fool's chair? Hey, fool, you're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would be a good idea. Let's get idea. this game started. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the Three Kings. That's ritual. not cool. I don't want to do that. That's I wanted to do that at the very beginning. <laughs> and then you you put so many stipulations to how it has to work. And I was just like, I can't fucking follow this shit. See? This is why you need to be like mentally stable and sober and all of that stuff well, for get, this game. I get that. that that's fine. It's but... First of all, I don't really feel like sitting in a dark room, holding a candle and a blankie, <laughs> and then just being like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, there's there's much easier ways to get answers than this, this the, game. This game sounds creepy as fuck and like it would work, especially yeah. with the portals that you with the portal you just made. Cause for everybody that doesn't know, two mirrors facing each other is a portal. Yeah. God. I'm still convinced that that's why there was weird shit in the locker room at my middle school is because so like in the locker room, like where the um, like bathroom area was where they had like the toilets and the sinks. Right. Right. Of course, above the area with the sinks, they had the big, huge mirror. Well, on the wall directly behind it, they had another giant fucking mirror so that after you're done with gym class, you could put on your makeup and stuff. And they were literally facing each other. Always. And that room was so fucking creepy all the time. I always hated going near the showers or to, like, the bathroom area because it was always so weird and creepy and just felt, like, so dark. Yeah. Uh, Creepy. That's a good one. I I don't think I want to try that one. Yeah, me either. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'd rather do other stuff. <laughs> Mirrors scare the shit out of me to begin with. I don't need to play. I don't need to <laughs> fuck around with them. <laughs> All right. So, our next game. Dun, dun, dun. The Midnight Man. <laughs> this one's scary as fuck. So, the lore behind this game is that it was once a pagan ritual used as punishment for those who dared to disobey the gods. Hell yeah. This claim is unsubstantiated, though. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it adds to the lore of this game, though. All right. So I'm, st- I'm still interested. I'll tell you that right now. Anything called the Midnight Man, and I'm just like, what's going on? <laughs> I have to know. <laughs> so what you're going to need for this game, one candle. Again, I recommend a nice big pillar candle. One lighter or a book of matches. I would recommend a lighter over matches because matches take longer to light and sometimes they get blown out. Holding a candle, holding a book of matches. Oh my God, I got to set my candle down to light the match. Yes. By that time, you're dead. (laughs) Then you're going to need some paper and a writing implement, a pin, one wooden door that is closed. Was that a pen or a pin? Pin. P-I-N? Yes. Oh shit. But you're going to have your piece of paper and your writing implement and then you're going to also have a pin oh shit and then you have your one wooden door which needs to be closed okay and you're going to want salt lots of salt always want salt so the invitation (laughs) you're going to want to begin this prior to midnight The game must begin exactly at midnight to be sure to give so be sure to give yourself enough time for the setup and the invitation. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to write your full name, your first, middle and last name on the piece of paper. You're going to poke your finger with the pin and squeeze a drop of blood onto the paper and allow it to soak in. Turn off every light in the house. Place the paper in front of the wooden door, which is closed. Light the candle and place it on top of the paper. Knock on the door 22 times. The final knock must occur precisely when the clock chimes midnight. Open the door, then blow out the candle and close the door. Relight the candle immediately. Okay. I'm just trying to think about all this stuff. Like, okay, I got to do all this shit. This is the invitation to bring in the Midnight Man. (laughs) (laughs) So, now we're to the game. Oh, God. Now it's starting. Okay. The goal for the rest of the game is to survive the Midnight Man. What the fuck? So, you're going to start moving throughout the house holding your candle. Be sure to have your salt and your lighter with you. Oh, man. If your candle goes out, it means the Midnight Man is near you and you have 10 seconds to relight it. If you are successful, you can continue to move throughout the house. Do not stop moving until 3.33 a.m. So, okay. All right. This game is three and a half hours. Let's just pace around my living room. It's fine. (laughs) No, you have to move throughout the entirety of the house. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. 
If you are unable to relight your candle within 10 seconds, immediately surround yourself with a circle of salt. Stay inside the circle until 3.33 a.m. If you fail to surround yourself with a circle of salt in time, the Midnight Man will attack you. <sighs> At 3.33 a.m., the game is over and it is safe to turn on the lights and to stop moving. Says who? <laughs> <laughs> so signs that the Midnight Man is near you during the game. Your candle goes out. You suddenly get really cold. Yeah. You hear a loud whisper. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> or you see a dark humanoid figure in the darkness. Darker than the dark. Mm -hmm. That's the worst shit ever. Yes. I'm not playing this one either. So here are your warnings for this game. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Do not use someone else's blood on your paper. Do uh, all right. <laughs> it's fine. Do not stand in one place. The Midnight Man will find you. Do not fall asleep during the game. Do not leave the house during the game. Do not use a lighter or a different light source in place of the candle. Okay, so don't, like, if your candle goes out, don't just light your lighter and hold that there. Yeah, you're going to want to relight right. the candle. So basically, you're walking around with a candle and a lighter in your hand. Yeah, because <laughs> if, if your candle gets blown out, that means the Midnight Man is coming for you, and you got to get that fucking with... thing relit so that you can get the fuck out of that And room. you got to have salt in your pocket. Oh, my God. Yeah, because if you can't get that candle relit in 10 seconds... Circle of salt time, boy. <laughs> oh, God. And then you're just standing in the dark for a couple hours. It's like, this was fucking smart. Call the Winchesters. Babe. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, also, do not turn on the lights during the game. Why not? Do not try to provoke the Midnight Man. Okay, I can get So don't go that. all Zach Baggins be like, come fight me. <laughs> Do not assume the Midnight Man has left your home for good at the conclusion of the game. Fucking A. <laughs> I didn't. These games are, are not games. <laughs> right? Gosh. So extra things to keep in mind with this game. You are able to play the game with more than one player. Yeah, like you want to fucking do it alone in the first place. Yeah, so if this is the uh, case, if you're going to play with more than one player, all players must perform the inv invitation ritual individually. So each of you Ooh. are going to have your own piece of paper. You're going to write your own names, prick your own finger, with, and put the blood on it, light your own candle, and you're all going to knock 22 times individually on the door. But you're going to want your 22nd knock, all of you, to be exactly at midnight. That's the, I think that's going to be the hardest part. Yeah. Is, cause like, Timing out your knocks. Well, yeah. It's like, what what time do you follow? What time source? Just your phone? Or like... Yeah. Like... <laughs> it's fucking weird. Okay. The invitation ritual welcomes an entity known as the Midnight Man into your home. The goal of the game is to avoid meeting the Midnight Man in the dark. Continually move, <sighs> continually moving throughout the house will make it more difficult for him to find you. So our house, because it's like that straight shot galley style house, yeah. would be really like we should not use our house for this. Well, you'd game. have to walk into our bedroom, into the living. You have to like map out your fucking path before. Well, that's anything. the thing is because if he's in the living room, the kitchen, the dining area, or the laundry room. We're completely fucked because it's all a straight line. So you step into the living room. You step out of the bedroom into the living room. Just, just fuck yourself because it's all one fucking room. <laughs> oh, man. Um, if, he, if you do stop moving at any point, he will catch you. Accounts differ as to what happens if he catches you. Some say he will induce hallucinations of your worst fears until the end of the game. What a dick. Others claim he will remove your organs one by one. 
Major dick. Wow. Yeah, I don't want to take that gamble. Like, I don't think that would happen. I I could maybe get behind the hallucin thing, but just like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna start cutting out your liver. Yeah. Right. I give me that liver. I I could see the hallucinations thing. I could see him like maybe like just scratching you and stuff, but like straight up removing your organs one by one. I don't know if I believe that. I also don't want to play the game and run into the Midnight Man to find out what she's going to do. Yeah, that's true. I'd be really upset if I was walking in my kitchen with the candle and then there was just this dark piece of shit fucking standing right there like, oh, I gotta just walk past you, don't I? Cool, yeah. sick, fucking... My life's made. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely wanted to play this game. Fuck. Yeah, I don't recommend this game either. No. I don't rec- recommend any of these games. I don't recommend games that... Where you gotta you gotta prick your finger and get some blood out because that's just yeah blood sacrifice is not to be it's fucked ridiculous. with ridiculous <laughs> like that's some serious hardcore shit don't take that shit lightly if yeah. you want to play a game just get Monopoly I know it's <laughs> aggravating but just fucking play Monopoly bro you hate your friends after but still I mean you know who needs friends <laughs> <laughs> you could also play really fun games though like video games. Catan. Catan's good. Yeah. Life. That's a fun one. Yeah. We enjoy playing that. Fun things happen in life. Yeah. Unless you're playing with the Midnight Man. Unless you're like the last time we played life and I wound up with fucking seven kids and was like, are you fucking kidding me? I've had too many childs. (laughs) The car didn't even hold them. (laughs) I had to have a tow van. (laughs) Gosh. All right. So our next game is the corner game. What the fuck? What's the corner game? So there is an old superstition that states, if you look in the corners in a dark room before you sleep, your dreams will be haunted by ghosts. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? (laughs) There is an old superstition that states, if you look at the corners in a dark room before you sleep, your dreams will be haunted by ghosts. Okay. All right. I want to play this one. Corners are supposedly unlucky. What? It is said that ghosts can crawl around the ceiling using the corners to reach the ground. Okay. All right. Ghosts in a room will also linger in corners to avoid passing through the living, which they find uncomfortable. Okay. The point of this game is to call upon these entities that inhabit the ceilings and the corners. This game requires four people. Ooh, okay. (laughs) It is recommended that everyone develops a predetermined signal that does not involve speaking to indicate if one of you has disappeared. Bird noises. It's not speaking. Well, you want to, like, knock on the door, on the wall or something. I want a caca. Or, like, snap your fingers. You don't want to use vocal noises. No, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I I could yeah, I could do the snapping. <laughs> hey, look over here. One of the suggested methods is to assign everyone a number and have them knock their number on the wall after each rotation in succession. So, person 1 will knock once. Right. Person 2 will knock twice. And then person three isn't there, so you don't hear the three knocks. Dum, dum, dum. Dude, you better have good friends. You better have good (laughs) friends because it's fucking. If someone misses their signal, the speaker should clap loudly once to signal to everyone to begin the emergency procedure. Dance party? (laughs) Oh, no. I just knocked my glasses off my face. (laughs) I just pictured, like, fucking... Oh, uh, I just pictured me clapping and like, uh. <laughs> everybody dance out of the room. <laughs> everybody have fun tonight. <laughs> Get the fuck out of this scary room. <laughs> All right. So the setup for this game, you're going to want to clear the house you are using for the game. There should be be only the four people who will be participating in the game. Even all pets should be removed from the house. Okay. 
Turn off the lights in every room except the game room. This room needs to be an empty room with four corners. Sounds like every other room. <laughs> well, you have, I'm just there kidding. are weird rooms that, you know. Five corners? Well, I mean, think about like the loft upstairs. Like, couldn't use the loft because it's got that yeah, like true. weird like, like side thing and then like the eight. stairs. Technically, it's got like eight corners. Yeah. So, so anyways, um, you're going to enter the game room. And upon entering, speak your own name aloud three times. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Brian, Brian, Brian. <laughs> Your uh, turn. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you're going to designate one person as the speaker. From this point on, no one but the speaker may speak. Dibs. So you're going to close the door. I can't not talk. <laughs> <laughs> this game is not meant for you. No, probably not. <laughs> So you're going to close the door, and all four people should be in the room. Just facing their corners or just in the room? I just find it funny, four people standing in a room just in the corner facing, just facing the corner. It's like, are we in timeout? <laughs> <laughs> so then you're going to turn off the light, and remember, don't speak. All right. Uh, that would be really hard for me. Yes. So... Now we're to the game. I would just want to make jokes. <laughs> God, okay. To the game. So, each person, including the speaker, must choose a corner of the room. More than one person may not be in a single corner. Darn it. And remember to stay silent. Right. Stay silent. Shh. Each person must position... Position? Position? Position. Each person must position themselves in the corner, in their corner, standing upright and facing the wall. Everyone's backs should be towards the center of the room, and you should remain silent. This is important. You keep telling me that. <laughs> Stay quiet. I don't wanna. <laughs> Once everyone is in position, the speaker will count to three. Only the speaker should speak. You said stay silent. <laughs> no, continue. After reaching three, everyone will rotate clockwise to the next corner. Do not turn around. Keep your back to the center of the room and do <laughs> not speak. If anyone bumps into another player, turn on the lights and wait a few minutes before starting over. So you're going to want to try to keep a good pace so everybody can rotate in the right way. Gross. Yep. And there's things that might happen to make you bump into another player. Because creepy, creepy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> tell me what those things are. So once everyone has reached their new position, each person will give their signal. So, you the, know, the knocking, the knocking or yeah. whatever it is. Then the speaker will count again. Everyone will rotate again. Continue this until it is... Until it is time to begin the completion procedure. So basically, you're going to rotate until you reach to your original corner. Okay. That's the goal. That's... But there's things that might happen to keep you from reaching your goal. Fuck. If at any point someone disappears, enact the emergency procedure. <laughs> All right. The speaker should give the signal to per to begin the procedure. The emergency procedure is as follows. Each person must speak their own name backwards three times, then turn around and press their backs against the wall. The person closest to the light switch should turn on the light. The missing person should hopefully reappear when the light, com the light comes on. If the person does not reappear, turn the light off and continue what the with fuck? your game. And oh don't speak. Oh my god. <laughs> if after enacting, enacting the emergency procedure, an additional figure is in the room, do not under any circumstance, circumstance speak to the entity. Oh, I'd have such a rough time. The speaker should indicate to begin the completion procedure if the other entity shows up in the room. <sighs> the game is complete 
once each person has stood in the four corners. So once you make Ugh. the rotation around the room, that's when the game is over. But there's a bunch of shit that's supposed to happen to keep you from reaching that. So your completion ritual. Everyone should move to the light switch, ideally behind the additional figure. So you're, so you're not going to... You're going to try to avoid the additional figure at all costs and get to the light switch. I... Everyone must speak their own name backwards three times. Well, we're practicing that fucking before we start. <laughs> Everybody. Narab. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even pretend like I could speak my name backwards. In ad. Yeah, if I can use Danny, but if I have to use my real name. I would say use the name you go by, but yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I would have to. I would have to use now Danny. rib, now rib, now rib, now rib. <laughs> that might be it. It's close. Uh, um. Then you turn on the lights and you hope for the best. After that, what the fuck? <laughs> if you are successful, open the door and exit the room. Give it some time before you re-enter the room. And avoid ever being that in that room with the lights off ever again. That's stupid as hell. <laughs> I'm fucking playing this game now that I can't go into a room without the lights being on. Yeah. This is ridiculous. This. Yeah. First of all, all we're doing is making an entity pissed off because it's like, I can't climb the walls to get to the ceiling, you guys. You're blocking all the corners. Fuck you. <laughs> I'll just stand in the middle of this room just pissed. And then I can't say, hey, yo, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I like to say to demons is, hey, yo, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This yeah, is a weird, I don't weird like this game. one because, like, basically you taint the room forever. Yeah, that's, all, yeah. Like, like, you just fuck that room for the rest of ever. Oh, man, I would love to, like take this to somebody else's house, not tell them what's going to happen, just play the game. Like, hey, guess what? You're fucked. <laughs> what do you mean? No, it's there forever. Don't ever go back into that room. What? This is my bedroom. Yeah, you shouldn't have done it there. <laughs> uh, but you said, I know what I said. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's one way to fuck with your enemies. <laughs> Befriend them and then summon demons in their home. Ruin their lives. <laughs> All right, you ready for the last game? I don't know, that one hit me pretty hard. Of course I'm ready, what are you talking about? All right, so this is the one-man hide-and-seek. Nope, I remember when you said it in the beginning. <laughs> I had forgotten uh, I had forgotten on the way through, but now I don't want to hear this one. I don't like that. One-man hide-and-seek? Go sit in a dark corner and just wait. Till something finds you? I don't even know if that's the game. I'm just... That sounds like what it's going to fucking be. Anyway, let's do it. I'm excited. This game is super <sighs> scary. I don't know. I don't like playing games with ghosts. I like finding them and then fucking with them. I know that's rude. Zach Bates. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, this game originated in Japan and was known as... Oh, it's fucked. It's already fucked. Japan. Oh. <laughs> so, this game was known as... Uh, Hitori Kakurenbu. Kakurenbu. Sure. <laughs> that was perfect. You don't even know. Um, which literally translates to hide and seek alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Japan's one of the most spiritual places on this planet. Yeah, dude. They. Ugh. I'm like. Ugh, okay. Okay. Right. Fine. I fine. This is a weird and spooky game where you play hide and seek with a doll. Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck! Ugh! In this ritual, you like will dolls. summon a spirit and offer it a doll instead of a human to possess. Here, Chucky! Hop into this doll that I'm gonna punt if you run at me. <laughs> if you have psychic abilities, you may feel, uh, feel unwell or be prone to accidents during this game. <laughs> lord so what you will need for this game one stuffed doll with limbs <laughs> so you're gonna Can't get a potato 
Nope. That's not a doll. You, you, you stuff a potato. Giggity. Oh, God. <laughs> and then you're going to want one sack of uncooked rice, some nail clippers, a needle, and a length of red thread, a knife or a pair of scissors, something sharp, a bathroom with a bathtub, one cup of salt water, one TV, a hiding place, and some incense. Oh, this is a lot of shit. This is a lot of shit. Yes. That you made seem very normal, and it's not. It's totally normal. <laughs> Nail clippers, a needle, and some red thread. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Okay. So, for the setup of this game, using the knife, scissors, or whatever sharp object that you found, cut open the doll and remove all of the stuffing. Replace the stuffing with the uncooked rice. <laughs> Okay. Clip off pieces of your fingernails and put them inside the doll with the rice. Normal. Very normal so far. I do this all the time. Yes. I like to put fingernails in my rice. (laughs) (laughs) Seasoning. You fools. (laughs) Gives it a little extra crunch. Gross. (laughs) All right. What's this chewy piece? (laughs) Oh, <laughs> sorry. Good luck eating rice for a little while. Oh man, I'm gonna go make some right now. Gross. <laughs> I got some nails to cut. Ew. I'm sorry. I do need to trim my toenails. <laughs> <laughs> Those are worse. That's too far. Way worse. Too far. Oh, okay. So then, using the needle and thread, you're gonna stitch the doll closed. Right. Without cutting the thread. Take the remaining length and wrap it around the doll and tie off the end. What if you got a whole spool? Don't use a whole spool. <laughs> it's going to be a lot. <laughs> oh God, I really fucked up this part, guys. <laughs> then you're going to fill the bathtub with water. Then you want to purify the room with your hiding spot with the incense. Once it's purified, set up the TV in the same room. Place the cup of salt water and the knife or scissors or whatever your sharp, sharp, sharp object is in your hiding spot. I got a machete. <laughs> That's a little excessive. Hey, <laughs> we're playing hide and seek alone. <laughs> then you're going to name the doll. No. This can be any name except your own. I'm making it a funny name. It is also advised to avoid using the name of someone you know. Definitely a funny name. <laughs> Mike Hunt? I was thinking like Barry. Barry Gilligan. Something like that. Just something funny that would make you a little bit happier to talk to. <laughs> hey, Barry. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you're going to begin this game at exactly... 3 a.m. Of course. Of course. Of course. The witching hour. Time matters. It does. I know. (laughs) So you're going to say to the doll, your name is the first it. So I would say, Danny is the first it to this creepy ass doll. And you're going to repeat that three times. (sighs) So then you're going to go to the bathroom and submerge the doll in the bathtub. And leave it there. Turn off all the lights in the house. Then you're going to go to your hiding place and turn on the TV. Rice is going to get all soggy. (laughs) That's the least of your problem. Oh, God. Okay, turn on the TV. Then you're going to close your eyes and count to ten. When you finish counting, open your eyes, grab your knife or scissors, your sharp object, (sighs) and return to the bathroom. My greatsword. Remove the doll from the bathtub and say to it, I have found you, whatever you named the doll. So, I have found you, Mike Hunt. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) We're just talking to a fucking doll. So then you're going to use your knife or the scissors or whatever to cut the thread that's binding the doll. Uh, Spilling your toenails and rice? No, no, no. The the extra length of thread that that you wrapped around the doll, you're going to cut that. Okay, that makes sense. I thought we were spilling rice and toenails into the tub. No, not yet. 
Shit. <laughs> so then say to the doll, you are the next it, whatever the name of the doll is, and return the doll to the bathtub. Quickly return to your hiding place and stay as silent as possible. Fuck. So. Here comes Barry. At the end of the game, what you're going to want to do to end the game is you're going to take a large mouthful of the salt water and hold it in your mouth. <laughs> do not swallow it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just a story about good hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is the Japanese way to teach your kids how to get rid of canker sores. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take the salt water. All right. Um, so don't swallow it. Keep the cup with the remaining salt water in your hand. This will help protect you from any entities that may have entered your home during the game. Ugh. You're going to emerge from your hiding place and begin looking for the doll. Barry. It may not be in the bathroom where you left it. Bullshit. When you find the doll, pour the remaining salt water that's in the cup over the doll, and then you're going to spit the salt water in your mouth on the doll as well. <laughs> Say, I win three times to the doll. <laughs> I win. <laughs> I know it was loud, but it was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Once the game is over, allow the doll to dry completely. Then burn it and discard it. What the fuck? Wait, okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> so, once the game has begun, do not do any of the following until the game is over. Oh, no. Turn on the lights. So, don't turn on the lights. Do not lock any doors, any doors, including the front and back doors of the house. Do not make any unnecessary noises, and do not leave the house. Notice how... <sighs> Every single one of these games you have to play in the dark? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Why? Because the dark is scary. Just just that extra factor of scaring you. Well, it's that and also my personal opinion and belief and a part of the reason why I'm terrified of the dark is because I believe that the dark helps masks things that you're not supposed to see to move around. Same with fog. It's the reason I don't like fog. It's because I'm convinced... Fog. I'm convinced that monsters use the fog to move unseen because that's what they do in my nightmares. They use the <laughs> fog to move unseen. And it's very unsettling and scary. So, of course, what did I do? I moved to the air, to an area where fog yeah, is prominent. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, <laughs> jeez. I spend a lot of my life in a place where there's really never any fog. And then I come to a place where there's always fog, always. which is one of my biggest fears. <laughs> Anyways, so the TV that you set up in your hiding spot is to alert you to the present of, presence of any potential visitors. If it displays any abnormal behavior, do not leave your hiding place without the salt water. If you leave your hiding place without the salt water, you may encounter something wandering around your house that may want to cause you harm. Okay. I've actually seen, I watched a few videos on YouTube of what happens to the TVs during this game. And like, for real, it's kind of fucking creepy because they just have it like on the blue screen. Like when you plug in your TV and you turn it on, but you don't have anything playing on it. And it's on that like blue screen. Sure. And like, it just starts like, it, it's like totally fine and then it starts like twitching and then like going like static and oh it's really creepy and weird oh gosh uh, so then yeah you're you don't you don't want to let the game go for more than two hours right okay once you begin the game you must see it through to completion do not attempt to abandon it part way through okay because then you're just going to leave shit in your house. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> the rice inside the doll is to represent internal organs. <laughs> it also helps to attract spirits. Okay. The red thread represents blood vessels and seals whatever spirits you attracted inside the doll. Cutting the binding releases these spirits. Oh, okay. That's fucked. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. Super fucking creepy. I feel like I would play this game and I would immediately just like, when you're going to find the doll, just walk into the bathroom. That'd be the first place I checked because I'm just totally skeptical. Well, yeah. I mean, be like, ha, ha, I found you. You're just in the tub drowning. <laughs> I'm sorry, Barry. <laughs> I left you in the tub. But then you're going to, you know, want to pull the doll out of the tub and then pour the salt water on it and then spit your salt water on it. I find that part hilarious. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, my question is, is, like, so you've got your mouth full of salt water and there's supposedly possibly other entities wandering around your house? Right. What if you see one of these other entities and, like, do a spit take or, like, in my case, <laughs> drown in the Inhale. Sp- <laughs> <laughs> drown in the salt water that's in your mouth? That would suck. Oh, like, the- that would be my luck. I would step out of the hiding spot, and then I would go down the hallway, and there would be some sort of entity, <laughs> and I would just straight up, like, go to scream, but just like... <laughs> <laughs> just drown right there, just like... <laughs> the entity just starts like, uh, what do we do? Uh, I... Uh, I can't touch. Uh. <laughs> oh, guys, this one's stupid. We should just leave. <laughs> guys, it it's over. <laughs> this one's we... defective. I think she died. <laughs> she's just laying on the ground. It's... She's, we should go. <laughs> she's just coughing. She literally drowned in the salt water. I just feel bad. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I just... These games, these these fucking games, <laughs> right? They don't they they sound interesting and like kind of just for that spook factor of like summoning things and like yeah. all of that. But at the same time, like with all the rules with these games and like like do not do this. Like I feel like I'd fuck up and <laughs> I would fuck up hard <laughs> because straight up like the the four corners game. If I fucking like. If I bumped into somebody on the way to the corner. I would seriously be like, oh, shit. Yeah. I'd be like, sorry. Uh, Yeah. Fuck. (laughs) Or like if somebody missed their knocks, I'd be like, guys, hello? Yeah. Ah! One knock, two knock. Alan? (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Uh, But yeah, these are the... uh, creepy games that i have for this episode oh man like i said there's a ton of other ones and we'll probably cover more because of course there's like the elevator game and then there's bloody mary which we we might cover bloody mary on like a folklore episode instead of the games episode okay because there's a lot of backstory to bloody mary and everybody everybody knows the steps to bloody mary it's not like it's some big thing to me it's an urban legend rather than a game that i mean yeah kids will play it and stuff and act like it's a game but to me i think it's just an urban legend yeah i think you mostly just kind of trick yourself into seeing stuff in the mirror yeah yeah let's do it with two mirrors facing each other Let's and then not we'll have like just me and you facing opposite directions. So we like we're definitely gonna see each other, but not. What if Bloody Mary is like on Supernatural though? Or fucked. <laughs> Why you've killed a person? What? Don't you remember the Bloody Mary episode? No, it's fucking no. I don't remember shit about a lot. <laughs> I know I watched that show too much. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, in that show, she like. Only harms people who have, like, killed loved ones. And, like, if you haven't killed a person that you love, then, like, she won't fuck with you. But, like, if you stupid. have, then, yeah. I don't like that version, then. I know. I like the version where she just fucks with you. Just because that's what she's supposed to do. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll probably cover that on a urban legends or folklore or whatever story rather than a game story spooky folklore tales of wonderment <clears throat> yay <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so well thanks for teaching me about some really scary games that i'm never gonna play because too much work seriously i'd rather yeah. put fucking two pencils on a piece of paper <laughs> <laughs> and fucking and say Charlie three times or just get a Ouija board. But I understand people do like people like to play games that really get their blood flowing. Yeah. And that adrenaline pumping and just freak you out. 
honestly, I would not do the Three Kings one. I could not sit in a dark room with no. white noise with a candle and two mirrors facing each other. Yeah. I just, I wouldn't want to do that one. Four Corners, sure, I could do that one. The not talking would be a problem, but I could do that one. Um, not in my house. Oh, hell no, <laughs> not, no. So, I'd have to go to somebody's home and be like, you want to do this game that you know nothing about? That I <laughs> No, you just go to aband- an abandoned, it, you go to an oh abandoned house and do it there. Let's go find an abandoned house. No. I mean, yeah, we can go find an abandoned house and like. Just look at it from the outside. <laughs> well, and maybe go inside and ghost hunt, but I'm not playing fucking games in that house. <sighs> Pansy, gosh. No, that's okay. <laughs> I don't like the hide and seek one just because I don't like dolls. They creep me out. Yeah. Which one was from the No Sleep Forum that you mentioned earlier? The uh the Three Kings. The three okay, that one? Mm-hmm. It's, so I listened um, to from user Fable Forge. I wonder why I haven't heard anything about that one yet. I because lis- it was eight years ago. Well, I listened to the No Sleep podcast, and that's based on the No Sleep forum from Reddit. Well, also, um, I guess what happened with this is Fable Forge posted it on the No Sleep forum. Yeah. But then it overtook the No Sleep oh, forum. Oh, shit. Okay. For days. It completely overran it. So they created their own subreddit specifically for the Three Kings ritual. Hell yeah. That okay, that makes sense. To move it off of no sleep because nothing else could get through because everybody was talking about it. That's fucking rad. So it it wound up getting its own subreddit, which I think later on was taken down. I don't think it's active anymore. Okay. Yeah, it was eight years ago. So true that. Well, this was this was a freaky episode. Yeah. I got freaky feelings in my gut. Yay. <laughs> creepy, I, creepy. You're just like, I did it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> well, well, do you want to get to your... Uh, our first listener story <laughs> ever. We actually have a story from a listener. Yeah, we got an email. And I fucking printed it out because it's... This is good paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's Walmart paper. <laughs> I don't know. It's whatever they sell. Hey. <laughs> it's paper. All right. So I do have a pretty good story for you. This is this um, person does want to rena- remain yeah. anonymous, right? No. No? No, I'm lying to you. Yes, you do. they do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. This person will, will remain anonymous. And that is an option if you do send us your stories and you don't want your name attached to it. You can always just let us know at the very top of the uh, email or whatever you're sending us. Just be like, hey, here's my shit, but don't don't use my name. We can either come up with an alias for you or just say, you know, this person. Yeah, seriously, I'm just going to say this person because they uh, they only put their name on it once so no that's totally fine and you can just read what they wrote and we'll just skip the name heck yeah here we go with our very first listener story i'm so excited this one i read i'll be honest i read it before and uh, i have not i this know is, danny hasn't heard this anything. is a surprise I'm, for me i'm excited i'm excited too I, okay anyway i'm just gonna i'm just gonna read it <clears throat> when i was seven years old I was in a terrible accident that put me in the hospital for just under a year and many more years of hospital visits for surgeries. Oh, man. Immediately after the accident, I was taken to one hospital where I was pronounced dead. I remember floating above myself, arguing that I wasn't dead. Oh, my God. One doctor refused to give up, and the next thing I remember, I was being loaded onto into a helicopter. Once again... I was floating above the room, but it was an actual operating room this time. I heard them talking about how I wasn't going to make it. A nurse then whispered to me, hang on, at least till your parents get here. Oh my god, this is so much. It's heart-wrenching. In in parentheses, parentheses, I was with my my aunt when the accident happened. The doctor told me immediately after the nurse said this to me, my eyes shot open. Ooh. I grabbed his arm and said, I don't want to die, so tell that man I'm not going with him. <gasps> Creepy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have so many chills right now. The man I later described was not in 
was not in the OR, nor was he wearing hospital scrubs. Oh, oh man. A couple days, <laughs> a couple days later, I got a lung infection and both lungs collapsed. Oh. I could see my mom crying and many people working on me, crowded to the point I couldn't see myself laying in the bed. Once again, the old man was back. I wasn't scared. He looked like a nice man, but when he held out his hand for me to grab, I refused and started crying. Things went dark. Uh, things went dark again, and I woke up a week later. Oh, wow. As my stay in the hospital continued, I met many nice people who would come to my room and just talk with me. My parents told me no one was in my room. Oh, oh, man. I was in isolation to prevent any further infections. The nurses would look baffled when I would tell them about my visitors, telling me I had no visitors that day. Aww. I must have been dreaming. On more than one occasion, a nurse would walk by my room and stop to ask me who I was talking to. One nurse thought it was cute that I had many imaginary friends. <laughs> How They were seven when this happened? Yes, seven, oh, seven years man. old. Very... Young, but a, right at that informative yep. age. Yeah, just at that age where like you're not quite tainted by oh these aren't real. Yeah, things, you're still. But yeah, and then also in like that type of traumatic situation, your guard oh, yeah. is definitely going to be down. Ah, uh, and all those ghosties <clears throat> are like, oh, I want to come see the little kid and help. Yeah, Aww, just talk to her. So cute. Them. God. <laughs> a fireman was admitted to the room next door. He was severely burned, rescuing a woman from a house fire. Aww. I snuck into I snuck into his room any chance I got. I talked his ear off daily. Many weeks later, I woke up in the middle of the night crying because Tom, the fireman, had passed away. The nurses had to call my mom because I was so upset. They told me he hadn't died. They just moved him to the next they just moved him to a different floor. I was insistent. I told them he came to say goodbye. Aww. The next morning, the nurses on the nurses did, on my floor got word that Tom passed away during the night. My mom later told me that after this incident, a few nurses didn't want to be my nurse anymore. Oh man, that's so intense. Yes. Ugh. Oh man. At about twelve years old, I was in the hospital again for more surgeries. I woke up early in the morning and demanded I call my mom before cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mom grandpa came to say goodbye to me. Oh. My mom insisted he was fine, but she'd go check just to make me feel better. He too had passed away during the night. Oh. Very s oh my gosh. I have since said goodbye to four relatives that passed the same night I dreamt about our goodbyes. Oh, my God. I still see things occasionally, but I do my best to avoid certain places such as cemeteries, hospitals, and assisted living centers. Oh, for real? I don't blame you on that. I'm also not a hugger because sometimes I can feel something negative and it will make me sick to my stomach. Oh, man. You got a gift. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry for the length. Feel free to ask me any questions you may have. Oh my god, that's Sincerely so amazing. <laughs> thank you for the story. That was thank so you. good. This, thank I you love for it. thank you for opening up and letting and telling us about um your past and your and, and the life that you have lived and gone through. Yeah, and sh letting us share it with everybody and Yeah, this, this That's is... amazing. It's so cool. And like that's that's like a thing with um like people with like near death experiences or stuff like that where like they'll see themselves being worked on and like somebody will come to retrieve them and they'll be like, nah, get the fuck out of here, bruh. Yeah. And yeah. stuff like that. And then like, ah, all the ghosties came to see this person. That's so cool. This is our first listener tale. And I think it's amazing. It is amazing. I, I, I had chills the whole time because <laughs> it's so good. It's not it's not like super scary, but some of this is just it it gives you the heebie jeebies. Well especially the man reaching out. Yeah. That one got me. I was like Yeah, that's Don't do it. Don't don't take that hand. That's unless scary. You're ready. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanna say thank you. Yes, thank you again. That my, was such a good story. To my friend. To this person to who this sent us this 
story. We loved it. I will I will remember this for a long time. Yeah. I'll tell you that. It's absolutely amazing and wonderful. And you <laughs> have such a great gift. And I understand the fear of the gift because, like, with great power comes great <laughs> responsibility. You, you did. You, fuck, you did. Okay. Now that we've quoted Spider-Man, I think it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed this week's episode about our Me creepy too. games and our first listener story. And our first listener story. So, yeah, um, you guys can find us on social media. Um, we have Instagram, Twitter. We have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. You can just search Another Nightmare Podcast, and we should pop up on any of those. Um, also, if you could... Leave us a rating and a review. For those of you listening on Apple Podcasts or iTunes or whatever the fuck is called. Because that, that helps us get out there. Helps more people find our show. And, you know, helps more people listen to our creepy tales. Yes. And please, if you're listening right now and you've got a, a story that you can't explain what happened or, you know, uh, a, a traumatic experience that has left a, left a mark. Yeah, if you've Let seen something, if you've experienced something, you know, and it doesn't have to just be ghosts. It doesn't just have to be, you know, like our previous story. You know, it can be um, like alien sightings or yep. maybe a cryptid sighting or, you if know. If you saw Bigfoot, I want to freaking hear about it. For real, though. Bad. Like, uh, there's, there's certain cryptids. There's two that I don't want to use their names because it, they're scary, but I'm going to have to. because Skinwalker gonna... and Wendigo. God Damn it, Brian. I'm not afraid. Sorry. We will be doing episodes on them. <laughs> but, I should be, but I just can't be. <laughs> but um, if you've had run-ins with those, like those those stories creep me out the most. <laughs> I, I actually have a story about one of those characters that I will be sharing at some point on the podcast because... I can't wait. Yeah, that, that one fucked me up and I will not go back to this certain place. <laughs> <laughs> not at night anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, but yeah, so if you have um, a story that you would like to share with us to share with everybody on the podcast, you can send it to us um, at our email, which is another nightmare pod at gmail.com. It's all one word, another nightmare pod at gmail.com. You can also DM us on social media if you if that's easier for you. Um, and yeah, just hit us up, follow us, give us a rating and review, tell your friends. And, oh, our theme song, of course, was from our great friend, Rob. Yeah. You can look him up on Instagram. You can find him at insert nickname. Underscore. That, yeah, that's with a little underscore at the end. Um, he does have an album coming up, A Myriad of Mayhem. So go check him out and give him some love because he's a phenomenal artist and we love him. Yes. And thank you, Rob, for our theme song, as always. Thank you. And... You can also find me on social media personally at Oh Fuck yeah. I'm everywhere. That's O-F-A-K-Y-A. If you're interested, you don't have to. Whatever. Check us out. But yeah, and we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.